Today's scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong, the Lord, and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firmly, with the belt of truth bubbling around your ways, with the breast, breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes in the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the threatening arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all of that it speaks into our lives. We pray this morning that you would plant it firmly within us, that you would water it and help it to grow and bear fruit in our lives. We lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the most simple yet powerful phrases used in the letter to the Ephesians just two words, in him. Paul weaves this phrase throughout the entire letter as he shares about the love and power that comes from Jesus. We have access to this power when we locate ourselves in him. And so as Paul concludes this letter by showing us how we glorify God when Jesus works through us in the power of salvation and redeems us by building us into his body here on earth. We get our final marching orders. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Do you hear the echoes of in him in that verse? In the Lord, in his mighty power. Here at the end of his letter, Paul still encourages us to find ourselves in Jesus. Jesus is the Lord of all. I know many of you have had some trying times these past few weeks and months this year. In those times, we want to know that Jesus is still on the throne and in control, especially when so much of what we see around us seems to be evidence to the contrary. Not only are we called to believe it, we are also called to live out that belief by being strong ambassadors for Christ, representatives of Jesus and his kingdom in this world. So be strong in the Lord's power, Paul tells us, not just for our sakes, but because Christ calls us to bring the rest of creation into redemption in him, just as we are redeemed in him. And so we find ourselves here at the end of this letter to the Ephesians, and we see that Jesus is Lord of all, and he gives us everything we need to stand with and share him with the whole world. And one of our biggest challenges as ambassadors of Christ is advocating for and representing an unseen and unremembered world. We're all like children of immigrants who may be judged by others as if we grew up in another country, but it's a country that we've only heard about in stories from our older family members. And like those children, we know God made us for heaven, but we've never seen it. We know we will go home to heaven eventually, but we don't know when. More importantly, we know that we belong to God and His kingdom first, 
and everything else, our families, our communities, our political loyalties, and our ideas about the whole world fall below that. This world is not and will never truly be our home. Paul takes us even deeper, though. Not only do we belong to another kingdom, but our actual battles also happen on an invisible battlefield with enemies that are not human beings. The actual battles are spiritual battles between powers that make emperors and presidents look like preschoolers, and nuclear missiles look just like shiny matchsticks. Therefore, thankfully, we are not strangers to the idea of invisible worlds that affect our lives. Watson and Crick were credited for discovering the double helix shape of DNA from a photograph by Rosalind Franklin long before we had the tools to see DNA strains clearly. And long before that, the philosopher Democritus, this guy lived 400 years before Jesus, theorized that all matter was made up of atoms. And he discovered that well over a thousand years before anyone ever saw an atom. As we continue to fight battles with those frustrating, invisible germs that plague our lives, we see it's relatively easy to consider invisible players on a spiritual level far above us fighting for our eternal souls. And it's not hard for us to realize that we are not fit to fight those battles alone. God made us for that world, and we will return to him someday. But we're not equipped to fight against the powers of darkness that have corrupted creation since the dawn of time. We're grateful that God is greater than them all, and he stands in Jesus, above all, as Savior, Redeemer, Victor, and King. But what can we, tiny ants on the ant form, possibly do in this battle in the heavens, far beyond our reach and view? Well, Paul tells us our challenge is to stand firm. We're not left unequipped to stand firm in this incredible battle. Jesus gives us gifts to keep us individually capable of being his standard bearers in this battle. He gives us the whole armor of God, the spoils of war that have been reforged in the fires of his love and passed down to us as an inheritance that mark us as his emissaries of his kingdom wherever we stand. The borders of the kingdom of God are at our feet. And we stand as living signposts that our king is coming soon, and we prepare for his arrival. Those still lost in darkness need only look up to see the light of Christ, the great light of Jesus, coming into their lives. We have the truth that holds our armor together like a belt, keeping everything in proper place and allowing it to both move with our body and be a vital extension of our body when we plant our feet firmly in place. Righteousness protects our hearts, the source of our life, like a breastplate. And Paul says Jesus fits our feet with a readiness from the gospel of peace. So the part of us that God made to move is always ready to bring the peace that only comes from Jesus. Paul tells us not to wear our faith like a badge of honor, but to hold it up like a shield when the army of darkness fires flaming arrows toward us. Our faith deflects the doubts and lies that are fired our way. And we have our salvation that protects our head like a helmet, keeping our minds safe when our faith is too small or too slow to stop the enemy's attacks. Or to put that another way, we have the assurance that Christ has saved us so that we will not be led astray by the lies that would come at us through our ears and our eyes. And when we need to cut through the attacks that he sends against us in mass, we have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And we understand this is Scripture, even though the, no, the, the New Testament didn't exist when Paul wrote these words, because the Word of God has always been the account of what God has said and done. And nothing cuts through lies like the truth. And there is no greater truth than that found in God's word given to us. For centuries, the greatest generals and war strategists could tell you that communication is essential to win a battle or a war. If you cut off a soldier's communication, they lose access to every other resource they have from home base. And it's only a matter of time before soldiers are defeated, no matter how big 
or strong or well equipped they are. So Paul tells us to pray in the Spirit. Remember, we do everything in Him on all occasions with every kind of prayer and request that we have. And that connection to God also connects us to each other so that we pray not only for ourselves, but we stay alert and we pray for all our brothers and sisters who face their battles, fighting to stand with Jesus, standing in Him as well. So what do we need to do? We need to stand firm. Jesus does not ask us to fight for Him. God does not want us to take on the forces of evil in our world or in our lives. He does that for us. Like Moses and the battles that the Israelites fought while wandering in the wilderness, our job is to stand and lift Jesus high for all to see while the Spirit of God fights for us and wins the victory in our place. God does not depend on us. And it's good that He doesn't because we would find ourselves unable incapable and unwilling to stand in his place. We like to imagine ourselves casting out demons like Jesus and the disciples in the Gospels. Imagine that we could go to war against sickness and darkness with some kind of holy flamethrower. Sometimes we forget that Paul himself healed people and cast out demons. But he didn't write us any instructions on how to wage those kind of battles. Instead, he showed us how Christ already won them, particularly when he faced sin and death for us on the cross and in the empty tomb. We didn't take those battles from Jesus either. We don't sing songs telling Jesus we would take his place on the cross because we know we couldn't win that battle. When it comes to the spiritual battles, only Jesus can claim victory. And he calls us to follow him as he claims victory. But we're helpless. When he asks us if we're able to be crucified there with him, we find ourselves unsure how to answer that question. When he goes to war, we don't want to go in his place. We don't want to be with him when he faces sin and death. We want him to go instead of us. But the truth is, we do face sin and death. And sometimes we face them daily. When we do, we do not face them alone. Paul does not tell us to go ahead of Jesus in those battles. He doesn't ask us to hide behind Jesus or stay beside Jesus. No, Paul tells us to stay in Him when we stand against those forces of darkness in our lives. Because He is the armor that surrounds and protects us. His Spirit will cover and protect us. His words and Spirit will guide us. He will give us every word to say and action to take. And more importantly, He'll be the one to speak and act and work in, around, and through us. So we stand with Jesus at the edge of darkness, holding Him up because He is the light, the truth, and our only hope. He surrounds and protects us. He covers us in His mercy and grace. And in Him, we find ourselves transformed, growing into that very armor that He fits us with able to stand with him there in the darkest times. And not just for ourselves. We can see each other through his eyes. And we know that there is corrosion and corruption, brokenness and pain that needs to be addressed, corrected, removed, and disciplined so that it doesn't come back tomorrow ten times worse than it was today. We can only be good to one another when we are planted firmly in the love wisdom, truth, and power of Jesus. We will only see people truly change in His grace when we stop trying to fix the problems ourselves and bring the presence of Jesus into their lives. Because it's not you and I that they need. It's Jesus. If they're to receive eternal life and learn to live it today, they have to contend with Him find themselves in Him. We cannot offer them anything more or let them settle for anything less. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, You are the rock we stand on in the middle of the storm. 
You are the grace that holds us fast when we are not in control. You are the air we breathe and the water that gives us life. You're the nourishment that helps us grow. And you're the image and model that we seek to grow into. Without you, we are nothing. But in you, we find everything we need every single day. Lead us to the place you desire us to stand. Fill us with your spirit of wisdom, love, mercy, and truth. Do not let us content ourselves for less than what you desire. And give us the strength to stand there as a picture of what it means to be a light in the darkness, showing this world what you have in store for it, of what you are doing in our lives today. Bring your redemption, Lord Jesus. Start in my heart. Start in our hearts today. In Jesus' name.